It's Tony Valentino of the Stan Delson co-founder, and you're listening to Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio with your host, Vinyl Man, Jeb. Hi, this is Terry Draper from Plateau. I'm Brendan O'Hare. I used to be in Teenage Fan Club. Hey, this is Tyler Green. Bowen Radford. Tino Troy from Plain Mantis. Lanny Flowers. I'm Frankie Siragusa, and you're tuning in to Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio Show with Vinyl Man Jeb. You're listening to Mad Wasp Radio. First of all, I want to say hello to, to, to you, to everybody, all your listeners. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank uh, Dennis Channing for setting up this this uh, interview with you. And um excited that he got us yeah. on uh, Big Steer Records. Yeah, Rex so. and Christina, thank you very much for yeah. setting the word yeah. out first. And then, oh, Absolutely. Dennis, thank you. Yes. This is awesome. Uh, very very honored to be doing this. Uh, I just did one with Lenny yeah, Flowers. So moving forward, you get here. all the Same Big here. Steer Records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll start off. Uh, this is uh, Vinyl Man Jeb of Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio here with uh, Tony Valentino of the Standells. How are you, Tony? Fine, of the Stendhal's and co-founder. That's right. Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm great. I'm here in California. It's like about 74 <laughs> today. <laughs> Much better than the what East Coast. I'm I'm on, I'm in Connecticut on the East Coast. So it's it's yeah, freezing. Yeah, right. our show is aired in England, but I'm in, I'm the U.S. guy. I send a show over. Oh, in England so, also. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh, it's so wonderful. it's a lot of people ask me like, why are your fans in England? It's just like that's where they put the show, <laughs> and I, I love it. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Whoa, that's wonderful news. It's great. Yeah. So Tony, I have a first question for you. What, what got you into music? What what got you wanting to start playing and, and being in bands? Oh well, it's a kind of. I came from Italy. I was born in Italy, so I came to the United States, uh, and uh, I always wanted to to be a rock player, rock and roll from Italy, because in Italy we play a different music, kind of different, completely chords and string, you know, three chord things, you know. But then I was listening to the American music, and I was enchanted, you know, and. And I wanted to come to America so bad because my mom was in America, my aunts, all my families. Then they got back to Italy, and uh, so I and I kept bugging my parents to bring us back here. Mm-hmm. So finally, it happened, and and um, here I am. And I wanted to start a band. I wanted to play music, rock music, uh, when I came to the United States, and and. Um, uh, I continue with the guitar. I knew a few chords in Italy. I had a guitar that my uncle built for oh, me. Wow. Uh, yeah, because there was no stores in my town. It was a little, <laughs> little town in, in Sicily, up in the mountains, with the goats and cows, you know. <laughs> so, but I was listening to the American, you know, the M M way radios, you know. Yeah. Listen to the American music, um, uh, to to like blues and, you know. Um, Bill Haley and uh, and, uh, mm. and uh, all the, all their great buddy Holly. Yeah, rock around the, the clock with Bill Haley. I love yeah, that right, stuff. That's right, awesome. Right, right. I'm exactly. young, but I love hearing young. the older stuff. That's my thing. Yeah, <laughs> rock around, when I heard the song on Rock Around the Clock, mm. I remember I went to see the movie and I couldn't believe it. I go, I want to go to America. <laughs> I want to play guitar like that. You know, that's the dream right there. <laughs> yeah, right there, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's what it got me into playing rock and roll. You know. And playing, play and continue with the music. My dream was to come here and start a band, and that's what I did. I started working in this bakery. My uncle came, uh, took me to this. I couldn't be, speak English. It was like crazy. I was in this bakery catching like uh, packages, like uh, uh, the, you remember the Lucille Ball thing? Uh, yeah. With a, with a. Catching the chocolate, they put me in one of those conveyor belts, and the first night <laughs> was right just up. like that. Uh. All the boxes went on the floor. I was, I was so scared. I thought they was gonna fire me. But then I met this guy named Jody Rich, in there, and he's, and uh, we started talking. And he go, I go, yeah, I play a little guitar, and I kind of would like maybe uh, start a band. And he goes, yeah, let's start a band. I play bass, so we got it together. And we started, we formed this band called the Star Lighters. Okay. Um, so um, uh, then from there, uh, we met this fellow named Lenny Duncan, 
and we were working on the song, which I was part of creating, uh, and and it's called "Let's Go." You remember the song "Let's Go"? Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, it sounds familiar. Let's yeah, go. yeah. Oh so yeah, oh yeah. Part of the song that was my first recording in America uh, to record that song oh, wow. and be part of it and putting the hand claps. We went to a high school game one night. We heard the hand claps from every, the, you know, all the people in the audience. And that became a and status. I, that's said, every game yeah, now. I go, let's yeah. go. The song was called Delayed Action. And then I said, <laughs> let's call the song Let's Go. And then, that's what's so becoming. So we went yeah. to the studio a couple weeks later, and we changed the song, and, and I played on it, the guitar, and and we changed it to Let's Go. Huh. So and then, I, then after that, uh, me and Jody, the... the uh, Lenny Duncan disappeared on us. He, we couldn't find him. And um, so um, we, we were looking to form a band, another band, and we found this fellow named Larry, mm. and we formed the Standells. History was made right <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. We formed the Standells in 1962, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Hawaii right away. Uh, we had a booking with the name a name, and the agent go go outside, come up with a name, you know. So we all three went outside, came up with the Standells, um, which was from the amplifier the Standells, and then we were afraid of getting sued, and we, we it was from standing around because for three days we went standing around waiting for the gig, and and to come up with a name. So all kind of tied together the Standells. We had to change the standards to two L's because we were afraid mm. to get sued mm -hmm. from from the the amplifier company. Um, so, but that that was that's when, that's when I started the standards from day one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I was watching a couple of things. I mean, of course, there was the song "Dirty Water" that became a huge, huge hit. But I was also seeing that you guys were on the Munsters, which I thought was really cool. How was that? No, oh, that was an incredible experience, yeah. I'm telling you. And it was uh, just uh, uh, the monsters were, were so popular mm -hmm. that I was watching it every night, you know. It was like <laughs> everybody was watching it. Yeah. Was and then when I found myself at Universal Studio on the set, it was like hard to believe. <laughs> I go, I'm, I'm really over here with a grandpa and, and Herman and yeah. Bill Lilly and, and the kid, everybody. Everybody was so nice, and and then it was, everything was so wacko, so crazy. Yeah, it's got to be so different. <laughs> and, yeah, everything was like all over the place. Um, but it was an experience, and and then they wanted they wanted the Beatles originally, wow. but we didn't, um, we didn't, um, they didn't they turned them down. So that's why they wanted us to. To do, I want to hold your hand. Ah, okay, that makes yeah, sense. I was going to ask that next. Yeah. Yeah, we should do. I want to hold your hand. Yeah. Ah. And, uh, so we did that, and it was it was incredible. Up to this, people, I had no idea. Up to this days, people remember us for the episode of the monster. That was unbelievable. <laughs> And I'm, I'm only tw I'm only 22, and I was just watching the clips, and I grew up. My dad's like 65, so he was showing me all this yeah. stuff, and I grew up knowing the uh -huh. monsters. And then all of a sudden, to, to put, I started looking up stuff on the Standells, and I was like, oh wow, they were on the the, the show, and it was just like cool to see. Yeah, them. right. We did a lot of shows. We did like a Bing Cosby show. Yeah. We did a Get Yourself a College Girl, where the animals were Dave Clark Five were in. Oh and, wow. Yeah, I got the poster right there on the wall. Oh, cool. Get yourself a I'm looking at the animals, David Clark Five, who else? The Standells. Uh, there was uh, some other bands, hmm. but it was a, a movie, another Hollywood, very cool. great, great. You know, one of those those B movies or whatever. You oh, know? Those are fun. I like watching the Zappa yeah, ones, yeah. like Two Hundred yeah, Hotels yeah, right. and all that whole era. That's been like my, my thing too. Just looking back on things, but uh, we'll get right into the real dig deep question for you. What was the song inspiration behind Dirty Water? I mean, this was one of the Standells' biggest hits. I mean, it became right. very much a Boston theme song for sports teams and so on. What was the uh, big inspiration behind that song? Well, the big the big inspiration was. Uh, um, about oh, oh, hold on one second. Yeah, I'm no trying to. You're recording the show, right? Yeah. Okay, and then maybe Dennis could get up. 
a copy. We could get a copy later. Perfect, yeah. Uh, um, so um, it was like after we recorded with Liberty Records and VJ Records, and we were trying to get a hit record, mm -hmm. and nothing really happened. Then we got signed with the Cobbler Records, and then we met Ed Cobb. This um, they introduced us to to Ed Cobb uh, uh, production, and we went in the studio with him, and he had some songs, and uh, he played us "Dirty Water." He played us "Dig This." He played us. Uh, oh no! So first, let's go to "Dirty Water." <laughs> so he played us "Dirty Water." We didn't yeah. kind of like it. It was like a three chord change things. But the story was good because he was in Boston. His girlfriend was going to college, and he couldn't see her because. Oh. And neither were everybody was was getting to bed early. They wouldn't let him out because all the girls had to go in by twelve o'clock. That's what he ah. says. That song, uh, and then he. Meanwhile, I was waiting to see her. He was walking around the Charles River. You know, he got mugged, and you know the smugglers, the lovers, yeah. and thieves. Um, but then we didn't like the rewards, and then he needed something, so we we're talking about, we kind of dropped it, we started doing some other songs. And then we talked about Dirty Water, and then uh, maybe we should have put something in the front. So I went home and started working with some idea on the guitar, mm -hmm. and I remember listening to the Stones' Satisfaction. Ah. I go, maybe I come up with something like that, maybe, you know. And uh, so... After about three or four days, I got I got the riff and I went back and we right. put it on the song. Very was, iconic riff, the bump bump bump. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I know all the guitar um, players, you know, like oh, yeah. that. It's incredible. I mean, it's it's yeah. got to be like kind of feeling like I feel like. I mean, to hear to hear uh, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I go, I can't believe it. I, I know. Yeah, you know, he's he's playing that something incredible. that I wrote. You know, yeah. I was gonna say it's got to feel kind of like a mini success, like yeah. the Beatles. Yeah. I'm sure the Beatles felt really like uh, everybody yeah. covering them and wanting to be them. It was like whoa, and then to have right. something like that, like right. a mini mini kind of thing like that, which is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I've again a song that I've, I actually have on a 45. I gotta find it. It's my dad's. I gotta find it. I'll take oh, a picture. Really? I'll put it as the thumbnail for the video. I'll take a picture of it for it. And when uh, I meet you the next time, I meet you. I'll sign it for oh, you. Oh, that'd be amazing. If you ever come to the East yeah. Coast, let me know. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'll keep sure. it. If you want anything to sign, I'll, well, I can do that. No problem. Perfect. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. And uh, so next up I have for you, I'll go right into the Big Stir Records question for you. What What got, what, uh, sorry. How did you get involved with uh, Rex and Christina of Big Stir Records? How did that come about? Well, uh, the thing was that I've been working on this new album for a couple of years to, to release Dirty Water again to redo it. Uh, I actually... I was talking to um, to um, Rick Springfield, um, you know Rick Springfield, yeah. that Jesse girl. Oh yeah. He used to come to my restaurant. I opened a restaurant oh, wow. one time, and we we met, and then and then I went to the studio one day, and he goes, "Yeah, I'm I'm redoing all my songs on my oh. new album because so I can put it out and make all the money, you know." Yeah, redo it, get it remastered so in stereos. Yeah. I'm going to do the water again, you know, why not? <laughs> why not? So I've been working on Dirty Water. To re I redid all the album, all the songs on the album. But through I got through Big Steer Records it was through Dennis Channing because ah. I've, been, I've been kind of friends with him, talking on, you know, exchanging songs and this and that. Very cool. And he's been very, very helpful, and he's a big fan also. So he got, a, he got me... In touch with the big steer records, awesome. and, and then he got us to sign the deal. You know, very so, cool. So wow, I can't believe this. You know, this time I've been waiting fifty years for this. You know, <laughs> so and, and it, it is really a great, uh, a great new experience here. I'm going. Yeah, through. and it's it's fun because I think a lot of people that loved the Standells back in the day will be very excited to hear something from you. Yeah, of course. Right, right. And Big Star Records is one of my favorite record labels. I started my own label because they inspired me so much to do so. And Rex and I are very like good friends, and we talk oh, back really? and forth on Facebook. And I said, Rex, oh, I did really? Laney, Laney Flowers' interview. If anybody else on your label would like to do interviews, he goes, I'll get you in contact with a few, and that's how this all got started. Oh, wow. And it's a, just the connection I needed because I, I just love classic rock, all the old psych stuff, yeah, garage oh, rock. Great. I'm a huge Kinks oh, fanatic, cool. stuff like that. So it's just been like, you know, it's great to find. And then the Standells, of course, have been right on the spinning of the, the wheel of the vinyl i should say actually on the records i have records all over here as well so 
I'm perfect. And then I have up next um, is the second I, half I here. Say that, oh, go ahead. So I talked to Rex mm -hmm. and Christine on the phone through Dennis. We were connected ah, cool. on the phone. And then so yeah, they're really nice people. Yeah. And they, I, they have nice... You know, they, uh, everybody says nice things about the label. So, yeah, I've, I've, my dream was to get on there as a musician, too, but it turns out to be the radio host great. side, so it's perfect. Great, I, either great. way, I'm very happy and just so excited to see what future releases they have coming, and they get aired right on my show. I have the tie-in, so whenever they get new oh, stuff, cool. it goes right on the show. Right. So I thought I'd tie it in with getting an interview with uh, the Tony Valentino, you know, <laughs> get, right. get, get some uh, standells on there. And so the second half of our show, so we do this one here. Um... And then I picked like six of your songs to like share the story. And this will be on the podcast as well, but I'll also air this section on the radio show. So we'll have, you'll get, you know, double air there for you. And so I picked six of your songs just to tell the stories behind and stuff. We've already did Doherty Water. So we'll do, uh, next up is Barracuda. I've heard the redone version of that already. Fantastic. Fantastic. But the original is such a good one too. So what was the writing process and story behind Barracuda? Well, Barracuda actually, Ed Cobb wrote. Uh, oh, okay. Barracuda. Yeah. He, he presented to us. And we recorded it because I really like that song. You know what? What I also didn't record mm. that we turned it down. Tainted love. Really? We turned it down. Tainted love. Yeah. That was a way it later, sounded, soft it sell song. Like yeah. crap. When we played it, it sounded horrible. It didn't even sound. Those guys in England, they did a big. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, that's, and that's they, like they a classic. The song happen. Yeah. 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 It was nothing like sound like like those guys in England. You know, yeah. really. <laughs> uh, the same way with Dirty Water, it was like three chord changes. And I put the riff and Dick mm. Dodd started putting, uh, I want to tell you a story. And so we all kind of, you know, put the song together. Very cool. But anyway, that, yeah, that's a Barracuda. He, he wrote it, Ed Cobb wrote Barracuda. And uh, when we recorded originally, I really liked it. We did a nice riff, the thing, you know. And, uh, uh, the rhythm, you know, I really like that kind of that kind of rhythm, bouncing yeah. rhythm. It's kind of a happy song, you know. It's very fun to listen to too, especially yeah. if you got like that psych yeah. mix in there. You throw it in with the Stones, no, the early Stones. One, I put some slide guitar in yeah. a bit. Yeah, I made it a little bit more hip. Yeah, yeah. And then I have uh, Ride on the Sunset Strip was another one I picked here uh, with the help of Dennis. He picked a few songs with me, so it was very... He, oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I wrote that one. That's a great one. Because uh, the riot uh, that was going on on Sunset Strip in 67, ah. everybody was going crazy with their long hair. All the police were on horse, horses and sirens, cops everywhere, beating up all of us with long hair. Hmm. They had no for nobody wow. they wouldn't let us they, it, it was just like they were trying to get rid of us because they the society the the older society they didn't like us hippies you know yeah i've so heard about it but you, it's so different us. yeah you know they even had signs off the freeway it says get you purify america get yourself a haircut you know <laughs> i never forget that um but it was a quite a, a scene because we wouldn't give up. I was a movement. Mm -hmm. It was a revolution. Yeah. So the 60s, they, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the other people, the, the older people, they, they, you know, we had the war going on in Vietnam, the movements of the right of the hippies, you know, the acid, drugs, yeah. sex, drugs, and rock and <laughs> That's roll. where it came from was the 60s, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. But Ryan, it was great. We had a great experience, <laughs> you know. Actually, I wrote the song almost overnight. Our wow. manager wow. called me, and he goes, oh, they're making the movie, Ryan, and it's a and they need a song, and uh, <laughs> you got to come up with a song quick. Uh, so I put it together, you know. And, Very cool. And it's the history, yeah. Yep. Another one I picked was Sometimes Good Guys Don't Wear White. That was uh, another one I picked there for the, the show here. Uh, okay. Tell us about that one. That one, uh, Ed Cobb wrote that oh, okay. one again. I keep picking That's the Ed Cobb song. ones. <laughs> yeah, Ed, he wrote that for sure. Yeah. I give him credit on that song, but not on Dirty Water. You know, he wrote the whole song. Dirty Water, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, so, but a good guys don't want to write. Great story, great meaning. You know, Dick Dodd did, he did a great job singing it. You know, uh, the bass line, we all played good on it. And the mm. whole song was, was I had no idea that 
a lot of people. I saw, I seen a, a video that all the mods from England did with the scooters, and they were playing "Good Guys Don't Wear White Behind." I couldn't believe that. I go, wow, this is incredible, you know. And we recorded that I in Seattle because when Dirty Water came out, it started breaking all over the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing in Seattle, and the club owner wouldn't let us go to go on tour. <laughs> so we had to finish our gig at this rinky club, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's best. Like, it's like you won, you won the lottery. You got thirty-eight million dollars, but you still got to finish the game here. <laughs> we won't let you get the money, you know. So, and then we recorded the uh, good guys that were right in Seattle. Yeah. Wow. Stood, yeah, Ed Cobb flew over there, and then we did that in Seattle. That's a great uh, tune. There's so much history to you guys. Just listening to each of the records yeah. that you guys have out and just That's enjoying. So it's so much fun. <laughs> I love yeah. the, the garage rock yeah. style. Yeah. Of it. yeah, right. Because we recorded in the garage. The yeah. recorder was recorded <laughs> on top of this garage. You know, wow. Like, <laughs> a, little, a little studio, you know. It was yeah. like nothing like a like a four-track thing, you know. That's those awesome. Days. Yeah. It's all like Beatles and you know. Um, so, but it was um, it was something else, you know, to come up with, with that sound. Yeah. Actually, the engineer, Armour Stein, was the engineer was a genius. He recorded George Harrison in the in the eighties. Oh wow! So yeah, he he did. He was he was a great uh, German engineer guy. Very smart. He knows he knew a lot of little things about recording and stuff like that. That's why the garage. That's why the it's, the reward is a garage, you know, recorder and this garage on top of this garage. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually you know? is a garage versus people yeah, trying to call it garage rock. rock when they lower yeah, the quality yeah, of right. the song. It's This yeah. is actually in a garage. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I think I got uh, one more song for you to pick here. I had Why Pick On Me was the other one that I had uh, set up for oh, just yeah. telling the stories for. Another story. I think... Uh, yeah, Ed Cobb wrote that one <laughs> Another... also. Yeah. Uh, there was another... I kind of did not like the rhythm mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. but it was kind of ding 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 I kind of, I kind of to these days, I can't, I can't figure it out. But uh, I was not too happy about that. It's mm. not one of my favorite Sandel songs. But uh, it's all right. I mean, it is fine. It's the message, you know, that is there. And uh, but I wish it would have came on different beat, you know. I got but you. Unfortunate, but um, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Well, Tony, so, I, I thank you for your time. We're gonna get this all aired up and, and have this going. And uh, just wanted to wonder if you could do uh, one thing for me as a radio ID for the show. So like, have you just say, uh, "This is Tony Valentino, and you're listening to uh, Unlikely Places Pop and Rock Radio on Mad Wasp Radio." That would be. I could use that. You want me to do it now? Uh, I could have yeah. you record it if you wanted to record it in the studio and then just email it to me. I could have you do that. Yeah, I record it. So you yeah. have time. I'll write it out for it. you. Yeah. Yeah, I record it in my studio and Perfect. send it to you. Perfect. That'd be great. Yeah, because I got, I got your info and everything. Yeah. And um, I added you on Facebook so, as well, sent you a friend That's request. it. Just now yeah. we got the, the single coming out on Friday, Barracuda, and then the LP is coming out Ooh, in a I'll couple months that. because it's going to be vinyl. So we're oh, waiting. very cool. For the vinyl, you know, the, yeah. the steer records. And uh, thank you so much to you. I appreciate it. Thank to you, Dennis and the big steer records and all the fans out there. And we're going to, we're, we're working on some, to do some new show. But this is going to be on the Tony Valentino of the Standales. Perfect. Uh, and um, so um, I'm getting ready here to uh, get ready for the road again. I'm ready for uh, you. If you come to the East Coast, let me know. Oh, yeah. um, I would love Absolutely. to. I'll for probably sure. have you, maybe have you sign a guitar or something. There you go. Oh, <laughs> I play guitar too. So Anything this is you awesome. need, I sign and oh, send perfect. Thank you. Or whatever. Yeah. And then um, this will be on, uh, you let Dennis know. Let us know when it's going to be on and everything. Yeah, we'll this do. Show. You're tuned into Mad Radio. Don't forget where you are Don't change that dial 